The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, a really important webinar uh, about um, a scheme that we thought was old, but it's returned and is new again. And that happens to be with uh, unauthorized ticketing and phishing emails. So uh, this is going on currently and um, we hope you enjoy it. We're gonna you know, push a lot of facts out to you and it's just sort of what, what's going on with the scheme and how destructive it can be as well. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, along the right-hand side, you should see in the box a uh, questions answer. So we love lots of questions. And so you can just click on that box and we will uh, try to answer as many as possible. Um, there might be questions that might have to go offline, so be prepared for that. But we do love to um, answer the questions during the forum. So you don't have to save them to the end and hopefully you will enjoy it. So, uh, hi, my name is Doug Nass and I'm the uh, Director of Fraud Investigations here at ARC. Been doing this uh, fraud stuff for 26 years. Um, so I've seen a lot, done a lot. Um, along with us today is uh, Cornelius Hadding. He's the uh, Director of Revenue Integrity. And um, we hope you enjoy today's webinar. So let's get right to it with the unauthorized ticketing. And you know, what is that? What, is, what does it mean when a ticket is issued, but it's unauthorized? Basically, it means that a fraudster has remotely control, has re remotely accessed a, a travel agent's um, GDS because they've harvested their login credentials. And so they don't have to physically take over the machine. It's just that they're able to remotely gain access as if they're the agent and then issue tickets for their own customers. And what's um, old and new again is the fact that we had a, um, if you've been in the industry a long time, you might recall all the fraud alerts. And uh, I know we did webinars about this in the uh, 2009 to 2014 timeframe. And it was a, a, just a, a giant, industry challenge. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of incidents of this unauthorized ticketing in which fraudsters out of West Africa issued millions of dollars worth of tickets. And it was a just a huge challenge. Um, but doing the same, a lot of the same stuff, basically blasting out to the US travel agency community. And I think that also up in Canada, they had this as well but hoping that they would blast these phishing emails out in, in order to find just you know that one or two agents who were going to um, un, unknowingly give up their login gds login credentials um, thankfully uh, we've had very few incidents in the u.s since 2014 and that's because between well in 2013 we had two guys arrested in ivory coast and that was awesome but unfortunately the incidents continued on um, and then it came to a halt in the u.s in 2014 when a third uh, fraudster was um, was arrested uh, upon his arrival he'd flown from um, west africa into paris where the authorities were waiting for him um, he did maybe a year and a half in a prison in in france he was eventually extradited to the U.S. and then, um, but he, he served out his time and he was released in uh, in late 2018. Uh, we believe he was then subsequently um, extradited out of the U.S. He's originally from Cameroon, so uh, we don't know what he was doing from late 2018 into early 2021. Um, is he behind this? Are the, the two guys that were arrested and in, incarcerated in Ivory Coast? Um, you know, have they served their time and been released as well? And they're all back up to their old tricks. Um, have, did they teach it to somebody else? Um, did they teach, uh, did they give this up as a uh, 
crime as a service on the dark web where you know one criminal will teach another how to pull off a scheme um, or offer to do part of a scheme for them. So there's a lot of a lot of unknowns here. We just know that there's enough similarities between what happened to, uh, 09 to 2014 to what's happening in 2021 that um, you know it, it's it's definitely concerning. Um, okay. So how do they pull it out? Or well, oh, the routes. Let's take a look at the routings first. So most of the travel that we've located so far is within West Africa. Uh, the majority of it is, is emanating out of um, Abidjan, Ivory Coast, and a lot of it is up to uh, Casablanca, Morocco. Potentially, this involves uh, human trafficking, uh, maybe, uh, or Abidjan up to Tunis um, in Tunisia. You know, these would be points at which, you know, the, um, you know, the Immigrants could be jumping on boats to get into Europe. We we just don't know, um, but they are definitely they're using these types of tickets to get themselves out of Ivory Coast. We see it out of um, Ghana, which we didn't see in twenty in two thousand nine to twenty fourteen. There was very little traffic in and out of Accra. Um, and if you've been in the agency field for a long time or listened to any of our past uh, webinars on traditional credit card fraud, uh, we see a lot in and out of Accra, Ghana. Um, that's always been a hot spot. Um, Nigeria as well. But we pl see places like uh, Dakar, Senegal, um, people traveling Senegal, uh, Dakar up to Morocco or, or Tunis, um, you know, places like that. And then if uh, I believe if the passenger and any you we get this question sometimes of, so the tickets got issued, Why? what are they issuing them for? And, and people, believe me, people are traveling on these tickets. Maybe not every last one of them, but um, you know, they are, they are definitely traveling. Um, some of them, if they have, I guess, the proper documents are trying to get into France. We send them going up to Charles de Gaulle and Orly. We've had a few go down to Marseille. But even within Africa, we've seen traffic from West Africa down to Johannesburg, um, Addis Ababa, Dubai, uh, Istanbul has started to show up recently, and um, we're expecting to see more of that as well. Uh, and surprisingly, we've also had three or four passengers that flew out of West Africa into the US. And um, that didn't happen out of literally thousands and thousands and thousands of tickets in the earlier incidents we, we didn't have people that came to the us and so we have them now um and so that's an interesting development for sure we've and one of the things one of the hallmarks traditionally is these were all cash tickets um but that's there's now been a recent change we have detected that the fraudster is inserting compromised credit cards into the booking process to make them look a little more legit. So that is, that's muddying the waters for anyone who, who's trying to monitor this. When you're changing, you know, when the fraudster changes their behavior, um, you know, it, you, it takes sometimes a little while to figure out what's going on. So it's, it's you know, sort of like a cat and mouse. We at ARC try to monitor this. Um, we believe that um, you know some of the GDSs are monitoring this as well. But you know, once anyone makes a change uh, in their behavior, the, the the fraudster changes theirs as well. So that is you know something definitely to be uh, you know concerned about. Um, let me see what else do we have here. So we're going to take a look at. What, the, what some of the actual phishing emails look like. And these were um, forwarded into ARC by some of the agencies so that we could take a look at them. But what they're doing is they are, you know, they're targeting the travel agent's uh, email address. We don't know necessarily where they're getting these from. 
are they buying them from somebody legit and you know they're posing as a, a tour company and they want lists of agencies uh, we just don't we don't have any insight into that unfortunately um, but most of them are valid and what they're going to do is the fraudster of course wants to make their um, emails their phishing emails look as legit as possible they're going to start copying from legitimate um, documents either for off of a website you know the legit gds le website or some other industry provider it wouldn't shock me if someday they started using the arc logo um, we believe they've been using the iata logo name and logo for a while as well um, other industry partners in the past it would come from i think a, a hotel provider or a, or a tour operator um, so it doesn't always have to come from um, a GDS. So you have to be, you know, like I said, if if they're having little success mimicking what the legit, you know, GDS logo looks like, they're going to switch up. Believe me, they will switch up and change it to see if they can entice, you know, more people into uh, clicking on those links to harvest those credentials. And what they're doing is, and, and we'll see this in a minute, they're enticing the, the reader to confirm or obtain information, which is basically, you know, that those login credentials. Um, they want you to click on that link, um, which can be so, so dangerous. Uh, and they really want to create that sense of urgency through, you know, security update. You know, the GDS has upgraded their security. You need to do so as well. Um, things like a, a ticketing time limit changes to that anything that um, is going to spur that that person who received the email to immediately without really thinking about it um, to get them to lo log in so that they don't get locked out of the system and you'll see that that's that's the alleged consequence if you don't do this you're going to get locked out now think about it um, GDSs are not going to push out updates through that, through that means. They're going to allow you to go in through your normal GDS login sequence, through your, you know, your usual bookmark, and updates are going to occur um, behind the scenes. And you may, you may or may not even know these are occurring, but it's once you're within the your typical usual bookmark, you know, login uh, sequence. They're not going to do it outside of that. So that's something you want to think about that. You know, why is a GDS, why is, you know, some other entity asking me to update something when I'm not within, think about it, um, you know, uh, that way they're outside the castle walls. Once you log in through your usual means, not a, not a URL, not a, not a, a link within an email, uh, you'll be within, the, you know, the concept of you're within the castle walls. Um, and they should not, you know, know, these GDSs on their websites all say, we are not going to push emails out to you as a user asking for these types of things. And one of the greatest things that we really like about this is a lot, a lot of these look very unprofessional, and you'll start to see why in a minute. It has to do with the incorrect, you know, spelling, the punctuation, uh, the, the odd turn of phrase that, you know, once you really start looking at it, you'll say, you know what, a, a, a true industry provider would never send this out. This is just full of um, junk. And of course, you know, we, we rely on them to do that. And once again, you know, this is a best practice for your everyday life. The, you, this is not just for, you know, when you put your travel agent cap on and you're in your work mode, think about this. All the scammers out there that want to get a hold of your bank information you know through a text through an email um ransomware guys you know and we know in our industry that airlines you know and big uh um you know travel management companies consolidators they've been hit by malware and it's because somebody opened up an email they thought it was coming from someone maybe within the industry and it either had a URL, uh, a box that said click on me or 
a PDF attachment, a you know some a Word document, a, an Excel spreadsheet, and it dropped malware um, on that on that you know that user's computer without them realizing it. So, like I said, this is not just for when you know when you're in travel agent mode. This is this should be your everyday life mode. Being careful about opening emails from you know places you know senders that you don't know and um, asking for you know login credentials whether it's a, a gds a arcs iar iata marriott whomever you know you just always have to be careful about that um, okay so now here is an actual email on the uh, right hand side that allegedly came from the gds but is you know, it's made to look as much as possible as if it were coming from Sabre, but, you know, the, the fraudster simply, um, you know, copied and pasted uh, logos from either emails they've seen or off the website, and they've crafted this for their own data uses. But, um, and, and we'll take a, we're, we're going to expand portions of this to really look at what the different parts include. Uh, but at the end of the day, they really want you to hit click on that green sign in box. And that um, that will take you to the fraudsters website uh, that he controls. And we'll take a, a, a closer look at that. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, they the fraudster has customers that they're trying to get tickets for. And so here in 2021, we've got over 900 tickets issued for a value of, uh, you know, 1.2 million. So this is, a, this is a lot of money we're talking about. And over 75 agencies have been impacted in the scheme. So that is you know, very concerning. Once again, this is just an email that, phishing email that the travel agent, you know, one of the travel agents sent in to ARC. So taking a closer look, this is the top half of that email. And we just wanted to take that look and really look at, at the very top, Sabre. And look at the crazy email domain that it came from at coinersoyrex.com, whatever the heck that is. So it doesn't say at saber.com. Um, I don't know if there are other, uh, there may be other legitimate um, email domains that include saber, but coinersoyrex.com is not one of them. So immediately, um, something's not quite right um, and you can see that that was sent you know it was basically about um four weeks ago or uh, five six weeks ago so it's it's pretty fresh and it's got the the logo um and it's talking about a technology upgrade notification whatever that means um and in the timing of it all is interesting you know the at the top, the email was sent on August 14, and the start. Compare that to the start date. So it's just allegedly later that day that it's supposed to start and finish. So they're not giving that agent much time to go in. So once again, you got to think about, oh, you know, the agent, and we know you're you're um, multitasking, and you're like, oh man, I got to I got to update my login credentials, or else I'm going to get locked out. So, uh, and once again, you know, legit, the GDS would not send you information this way about an, an upgrade. It would want you, it would happen once you've already logged in through your usual typical means, not through an email. Um, and then, then you might get an alert about some type of upgrade. Um, but it's once you're within the castle walls of the GDS that, that that's going to happen, not through a an email um but once again you know we're looking we're, we're counting on these guys to to be sloppy and the second to last line is you know instead of the word information they've misspelled information and then um you know once you're logged in saber will be notified that saber red workspace has been confirmed well why you know think about it why would it if you've already logged in why would Saber have to be notified. If you're already in, they would know it. So 
that's something that just doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, as I mentioned, you know, these are the types of mistakes that we hope the fraudsters continue to make because we want to capitalize on, on them. So going and, and remember that coiner soy rex for in, in a few more slides. We'll to start to take a look at the bottom half of that email as well. And you know, please click here to confirm your sign in. And once again, you know, it wants you to click on that green box, the sign in, and it's going to take you to the fraudsters websites, website that he controls. Um, but just some weird language effective date is June. 2nd 2021 well if you recall this email was sent out allegedly in august so this so if it happened two months ago why are you getting it in august and then all global countries what you know that just doesn't make any sense what what does all global countries mean i mean it's just not something that it, it's not a, a a word combination a combination that would probably be used in any legitimate uh, email. Uh, let me see, and unconfirmed agents will be automatically locked. And that's once again, they put that little scare into you. If you don't do this, you're going to get locked out. Um, so that's where they, uh, you know, they want that, like, upping the pressure on you. Um, increased productivity, period. Um, it's in font, uh, it's in, or in bold. But the I is not capitalized. Thanks, Saber. Period. So, the period after Saber. I don't know anyone who would put that into a legit um, email. You just don't see that. Uh, but then so there's more fun stuff down below in the black area. Um, most people probably don't spend much, you know, any time looking at this. But the second line. Um, you know, visit our help center by clicking help training and training has two ends in the middle. So that's an obvious misspelling, even though it's in smaller font. Uh, we also have uh, a couple lines below that Saber is. So instead of Saber space is, they've run it together. And remember that because uh, you'll see this again and then located at 2211 North 1st Street, San Jose, California. If you want to find out who's at that address, uh, all you got to do is Google it. It takes just a few seconds, uh, but really 2211 North 1st Street is PayPal. So you that would automatically make you wonder why would a PayPal address be in what's allegedly coming from a Sabre. But, you know, once again, we're relying on these guys to remain sloppy and we want to use that against them. But in, just as important here is once again going back to that sign in, and you have to find you know where does it go? What you want to do is hover your mouse over top of that, and you can do it through the URL because they're going to hide in a URL where you're where they're really going to take you. So on hovering over that green box, the sign in green box, it says on the second line industrytraveler.com. What's that? Uh, I don't see the word Saber or any other GDS, um, you know, within that uh, weird combination of letters, characters, and, and things. Um, so this is a, a, another red, a red flag that something's not quite right. And you're just like, gee, I don't, you know, I don't understand what is going on with this thing. Um, but in another one, I'll show you one more phishing email. It's a little bit different, and then we can test, and I'll show you a website you can go to to start looking at those email domains. But this is just from about yeah, four weeks ago. You can see the front from line is go su at wallacegarden.com. <clears throat> so no GDS in there. And this is a little different. Uh, from claiming it was a, a technology notification, uh, technology upgrade notification. This claims to be a software change notification and that involves a ticketing time limit related functionality. So 
we, we really wanted to show this because, you know, the, the fraudster is not going to just continue to send out the same stuff. They're going to switch it up whenever they feel like maybe I'm blasting these out and I'm not getting the, um, the hits on it that I used to. So they're going to make some type of change. Um, but it's got a lot of the same elements, um, a lot of the same uh, things going on. Uh, once again, in the confirm now, rather than sign in, you know, that you can hover over that and you would be able to find out where it's really going to take you. But uh, along the bottom, once again, we're looking at almost all the same types of strange um, misspellings or weird um, phrases uh, towards the bottom. Help training, once again, with a double N. Um, Saber is run together located at 2211 North First Street. So it's very likely that, uh, you know, the same fraudster or little crew of fraudsters, you know, it blasted this out as well. And, um, you know, they're just, you know, they're not going to spend a lot of time creating brand new stuff. They're going to cannibalize past ones and mash them together and just blast them out because they just need to find, you know, that the, the one or two agents that are gonna, gonna fall for this. That's all they need. They don't need all of them. They just need their win percent, you know, is, is mighty low. They just need that, those, those few login credentials a day um, in order to get back into the system remotely. So here's an interesting site, and we use this at ARC all the time, and that is whois.com. Um, I'm on there constantly looking and reviewing um, email domains, looking, you know, what I'm, what I'm really finding out is, you know, when were they registered? So here's, well, once again, if you recall from the first email, we've got that email domain coinersoyrex.com. So if you have to think about it, you know, you've been a, um, a Sabre user for 10 years, for 20 years. And you always are expecting the same emails from them. And now you get something crazy as Coiner Soyrex, and it was just registered in uh, July 3rd of 2021. And it's asking you to do something or give up those login credentials. Um, that's when you need to take a hard step back and to say, why is a brand new um, email domain sending information to my agency or to me. It just doesn't make sense. But um, sometimes these sites like who is there's another one that we use uh, called uh, domain big data. Sometimes that has a little more information that's that's of interest. But um, you no, know, we, we do use this all the time. Uh, but you can look along the left hand side and, and I only put in 10 of the phishing domains that, that are controlled by the fraudster. And most of them have nothing to do with a GDS or some other industry entity. Um, you know, the first one and the third one at least have, you know, either Sabre or My Red Workspace or something, you know, some combination of that. But uh, when you compare that to how recently the domain was created, that's when you have to pump the brakes and say, um, you know, I've been de I've been getting updates or emails from, you know, Saber.com or Travelport.com or Amadeus.com, ARCCorp.com. You know, I'm used to seeing those. Some of these others on the left-hand side are just very puzzling. Uh, I don't even know what they're trying to attempt to do other than, you know, Pittsburgh classifieds. Well, I like that. But of course, Pittsburgh is missing the H. But, you know, the fraudster doesn't care. Um, and we can see all the way at the bottom, our friend that was used, that we found in when hovering our mouse over top that link, that uh, industry travel traveler popped up. So that, that domain is ooh, seven weeks old. Um, so it's a brand new domain, you know, controlled by that fraudster. So these are important things. I would bookmark that. It is super simple to, to law, you know, to go onto the site. It's free. Like I said, we use it all the time to 
look in, you know, take that uh, deeper dive into who's sending us emails. Um, when were they created? Is there a little bit more information about, um, you know, about who registered the the domain, things like that. So, but most of these have, you just don't even know what they're trying to attempt to, to mimic. Um, so, but once again, much like the misspellings and the punctuation and just the, the bad, sometimes bad layout of these emails, you know, we, we want to continue to rely on them to do silly stuff like this. And going back to, you know, what's old is new again. If you look at the top, this was sent in June of 2013. And some of the strange similarities between an eight-year-old email, phishing email, and what's happening in 2021. So a lot of the same, uh, you know, urgency about it if you don't log in. And so in, here, instead of a box, you've got the, the blue in the middle, please connect to MySaber to confirm your system, whatever that means. Uh, but once again, it's gonna draw you into a, a web page controlled by the fraudsters where they're gonna harvest your login credentials for their future use. And that effective date, you know, July 30th, 2013, and that weird phrase, all global countries, um, just a strange one, you know, unconfirmed agent ID will be locked. You know, once again, trying to get you to do something quickly without thinking about it. Um, the same misspellings highlighted at the bottom, help training. Uh, Sabre is 2211 North First Street, San Jose, which we now know is PayPal. So this is, um, you know, we had to dust off this old one because as soon as we saw the new ones, we we immediately knew we had seen some of the similarities. And once again, we don't know if it's because the three guys that were arrested in 2013 or 2014, if, you know, they're, they've just, they're out of prison maybe. Uh, we know one was out of prison, but did they return to their old activities or uh, did they teach somebody else how to do it while in prison? Um, who knows? Um, we just, we, we continue to look at it though. Um, but yeah, definitely wanted to show you, you know, why we called it, you know, the, the title, what's old is new again, uh, or the return of an old fraud. And now here's one of the things that is definitely concerning to us. Uh, beyond just harvesting the, the login credentials, and that's bad enough, and we're not going to, you know, we're not minimizing that, but login credentials, if that's all the fraudster has, you know, they're going to be locked. Typically, the GDS is going to step in and lock the, G the, the login credentials used by the fraudster, and they'll get with the user, um, and new ones will be, you know, a, a new password and login will be created. The, um, you know, unless the, that fraudster then goes and gives them up again, they're out of the system. What we are finding out is that through some of these, they are dropping malware onto the agent's system. And that is definitely frightening. Um, now, what you can do, and you can see that in that last uh, bullet point, but when you if you're thinking about it when you're in if you do happen to click on that link uh that takes you to what looks like a, a gds login page if you're still not sure see what happens if you input a fake username and password um you know uh tweety bird or you know barney rubble um you know any of those it just it doesn't have to be anything and a, and and a fake password password one two three you know a b c d one two three four and then click on next um or confirm or whatever the box is going to say if it if it accepts it then you know something's wrong right because what legitimate website would allow you into the system if you put in you know absurd uh, you know, a non-legitimate non, non -legitimate 
username. It's going to kick, you know, any legit site is going to kick it back on you to say, hey, this either this username doesn't, you know, this username doesn't match the password. It's not going to carry you on to the legitimate site. So that's one way you can test one of these if you find that you did click on it. Um, you know, knowingly input a fake username and fake password. Um, it also may or it may take you to the the real login screen for the GDS. And if you think that think about it, that's really strange because if you just input your login credentials, shouldn't you already be within the system? But if it takes you to the public facing uh, login screen and you have to put them in again, why why would it be doing that? Um, shouldn't if it were a legitimate login sequence, you would already be within the castle walls. Once again, it would not be asking you to, uh, you know, knock on the door again and give up your 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 login credentials. You should already be within. Uh, we've also heard that it may not take you to the actual login site at all. It may take you to a completely non-related um web page so that should be another clue that something just went wrong um and if you are finding that you know you something like that happened that uh immediately you need to uh go in through your usual bookmark on your computer or through your normal way of of gaining access to the your gds and change the password immediately. That's got to be number one. Number two is make sure, let somebody know that, um, you know, is the antivirus software running? Is it up to date? Um, you know, have have a professional look at it to make sure that no malware has been dropped on the system. So that's really, you know, the, the, the scare, like I said, the scarier part of this because whether that malware, um, you know, if even if you, if, even if it's not related to ransomware, which is the worst, you know, if the fraudster is um, simply going to use it uh, to once again get back in to do remote ticketing, that unauthorized ticketing, then, you know, because there's malware on it, they're going to see what the new login credentials are, and they're simply going to use those again because they they can see what's happening. So that's important. Um, so it could happen a second time, a third time, you know, that's all because they're seeing whatever login change, you know, credential changes are being made, they're already aware of it. Um, it could also mean that the malware, the fraudster is now in your system and are they trolling for your, your real customer's information? Um, so that could be very scary as well. Um, you know, giving up, you know, that important information. The, the third way is once again through uh, the ransomware. If these guys ever switched over to doing ransomware, and, and I, I mentioned earlier on, you know, we've ransomware happens in our industry, um, you know, to airlines, to big um, travel management companies um, have been, you know, it's publicly public information that they've been hit by ransomware. So that could um, cripple the business right there if they've dropped malware and or uh, they've encrypted your 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 network. Now you're going to pay them Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency to get the keys back to unlock your system. Um, that can be a nightmare. So that's another reason why you, you just have to be very, very careful. Um, about this, just beyond the ticketing issue, all this other issue could potentially happen as well. Okay, and another really interesting thing that we found at ARC is to see the crossover between unauthorized ticketing and traditional credit card fraud. And that credit card fraud we know involves that social engineering aspect. Um, where the fraudster is engaging usually via email. Sometimes they're calling up, of course. They may follow up with 
a with emails, especially if that travel agent says, you know, all right, you know, pass over, you know, you, have, you need to email me your uh, driver's license, passport, um, copy of the front and back of the credit card, et cetera. There might be a, um, a credit card authorization form still being used. Um, you know, we still like to see those uh, because it gives us more information about who we're dealing with. Um, but uh, we know also that these fraudsters are usually pretty terrible at uh, Photoshop. And uh, you can see in, in the passport and the driver's license, it's the same exact uh, photo. And so we just assume that that fraudster has uh, copied and pasted that photo off of some site. And uh, they just keep, you know, layering it into a... Um, uh, passport background and you know they'll, they'll make it look as legit as, you, as as they can but you know the the driver's license claims he's uh, James Weber and on the passport now he's John Spencer but uh, you know this is what they do um, you know we at ARC have been doing webinars and, and talking about these issues for many many years and um, but this is the first time where we've seen where there's direct link between some of the uh, unauthorized ticketing and the traditional credit card fraud. And what's in, um, I want to bring this out because of the fact that in the 2009 to 2014 incidents, we did not see this. Um, we desperately, I was one that was looking all the time for a crossover. Um, and what happens is, if a fraudster is not successful in, in passing along his compromised credit cards, um, his bad um, photoshopped IDs, just not having any success, then they'll switch up to uh, unauthorized ticketing or back and forth. Um, we've seen it in loyalty fraud as well, uh, bank loyalty fraud, whereby you know the, the fraudster isn't having success with one scheme, so they switch up or attacking uh, online agencies, trying to force, you know, trying to dupe them into that type of scheme. Um, so it's it's definitely interesting on our part when we see that crossover. And like I said, that really didn't happen in the earlier incidents, but now we can see direct evidence that it is occurring. Okay. And so we, you know, continue to monitor that as well. So uh, I know I've been showing a few emails from Amadea, from Sabre. Believe me, this is not a one GDS issue. This is across uh, multiple GDSs. Um, and this is a, a fraud alert <clears throat> that I, I was able to download from the Amadeus website. But you can see they're talking about beware of the same stuff. Um, phishing emails, you know, emails requesting login credentials, um, warning about clicking on links, it goes on and on and on, you know, that you have to be wary of, uh, you know, that it, like I said, it's not a one GDS issue. And we at ARC, we have seen where in the, in the 2021 schemes that multiple GDSs are being impacted, whereby we see the same passenger involved in incidents at a Saber agency and at an Amadeus agency. So we we know that the same fraudsters pulling these some of these schemes or part of the same crew. Um, you know, it, that, that could be true. Um, we just don't know yet, but there's a definite, we can prove that there's uh, that crossover um, between, between GDSs. Um, and I, I won't read through all of this because it's a repeat of, of a lot of the stuff. Um, one thing it, I think it mentioned all, you know, all mentions also is, you know, they may try to call uh, the agency to give up log login credentials and pass, you know, passwords. So we've we've heard that none of them will do that. They will not be making a call. You know, can please confirm this is your this is your your password. Um, or I need you to confirm that for me. That's not going to happen. Um, and they're not going to do it through an email either. It's just not going to happen. 
there's other ways that they routinely handle this outside of email uh, requests or uh, or over the phone. It's just not going to happen. So that's something that you know agency owners need to get out to every last frontline employee and contractor. Be wary of giving this stuff up to anybody. And here's a, a, an interesting product that uh, that comes from Saber, and I, I just downloaded this off of their website. But I wanted to include it, and this is a, a product they call Ticket Safe. And what it does is it turns off ticketing for uh, agencies. Um, and I know that it really won't work for the big agencies, the TMCs, the or OTAs. You know, they're out. You know, twenty four seven operations. But um, you know, a smaller operation might want to think about you know looking into the, the ticket safe product to say at the end of the day you know what no one should be ticketing uh now you uh what i've been told is you can go in and you can look at bookings and you can um do all, all kinds of uh, update profiles but it simply turns off that ticketing ability um and so you can know that at the end of the day because ticketing is off that nothing's going to go through your system um, as long as no you know malware has been dropped on the user's system that that will defeat it but for the most part you know you're gonna you're gonna know agencies closed up uh for the night get back in in the morning reactivate um away for the weekend uh, we know historically they liked to do a lot of this over the weekend a three-day weekend and so for small agents you might want to you know that you know i'm not going to be issuing anything at 11 o'clock at night uh two in the morning those those types of things because that's when the fraudster's operating he's not doing it during the day when you can look at a queue and to see why are there five tickets out of abidjan ivory coast to casablanca my agents di didn't issue these, these so this is all happening in the middle of the night when no one is monitoring the agency obviously so it's just a good thing i don't know if the other gds's offer this as well but um you know it's a it's a neat one gives you a little bit of uh, a safer feeling of okay you know i i don't have to worry about stuff going on uh, because one of my agents unknowingly gave up their login credentials because like I said, whether there's the owner of the agency gives up their credentials or a brand new agent gives up, all that fraudster needs is somebody to give up those credentials. That's the key. But some of the actions you wanna take. Okay, Doug, Doug, just one question here. Um, whilst we're talking about um, compromised credentials, et cetera, a question came in is that, so what, what, what should the agent do if they inadvertently clicked on that box Fill out the information and realize after the fact that they've inadvertently done something that they shouldn't have. What's what's the go-to process? Yeah, the, the go-to process is to immediately go in through your normal, your your usual typical way that you enter, not through an email, uh, through a bookmark or however you normally access the GDS, and change the password immediately. That's number one. Um, number two is to alert if you have IT people, is to alert them to say, I think I might have given up. I'm, I might have clicked on a link to a website that I shouldn't have. You know, you, you have to, somebody has to own up to it. Um, and so that IT can run um, um, the virus, antivirus screening software. Um, number, you would also want to alert the GDS through their normal means, not through any email in a, embedded anywhere. As I mentioned, always go and alert your GDS um, through normal means to say, hey, um, this happened, and then we've immediately changed the login credentials. So that, that should be um, number one. Um, and so that would ensure if they're harvest just harvesting 
the login credentials, then those are automatically not going to work anymore. But you know, you need to bring in IT to have them scrub to ensure that the malware, any malware was not dropped onto the system. So those are two quick things that um, need to be done. Um, another thing is just housekeeping within an agency. So owners, managers, you know, uh, unknown or, or former users, those have to go. Uh, make sure that you're removing them from, from the system. Ensure that that virus software is up to date so it can de detect the potential malware. And uh, training, training, training. Um, training is not a, a one time a year thing. I think I mentioned it before, we at ARC do monthly training on various aspects about being safe online, um, handling data, handling physical um, documentation. All of that is handled on a monthly basis so that it's at front of mind with all the employees. So you need to think about just because you've trained in the year 2021 in the spring, it's, you know, almost fall, um, it's time to dust that off and, and just get this, this type of thing front of mind because it's happening now in our industry. And once again, ensure that agents, contractors, anyone who is, um, whether they have login credentials or not, it, it could be someone in, a, in accounting who, uh, you know, may not have access to the GDS. They've got other back system uh, back office systems, but getting links that request that information, or it could be a an email from an unknown sender that has a PDF, a Word document, a um, some other type of document, and that if they click on it, they may be exposing themselves to that malware. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's a whole other ball game of distress and uh, opening yourself up to you know a whole lot more exposure to financial loss um, so that's coming in from unknown emails and we know that happens a lot um, in the industry um, and, I, and i did mention this earlier about you know we at arc use um, emails we, we transmit them out to others and they have a link and that draws them into our encrypted server uh, typically, we use it between ARC and law enforcement or ARC and and uh, bank investigators, things like that for fraud. And um, if we're going to share such fraud data, um, and that's routine. So it doesn't, as I mentioned, it doesn't mean that all, you know, embedded links are bad. It just means you have to be careful about them. Uh, you have to hover over, look at where know where that um, email address is going to. If you're not sure, contact that the sender through other means, not don't hit just reply through other means to find out is, you know, did you really send this? It's really key. And uh, like I said, this is happening. It's not just a, a travel industry issue. This is an everyday issue for everybody, whether it's your bank information or you know anything else whether a fraudster is trying to get more of your personal information so that's in, uh, on my end um as always you know um always alert your gds provider immediately if something's not quite right if something didn't go on alert arc uh let us know um uh, forward any uh, any suspected phishing emails. Uh, we've got our industry or our, our department email um, is stop fraud at artcorp.com using a, a subject line, possible phishing email. Um, we can be reached at toll free 855-358-0393. And especially if you've been impacted by one of these frauds where they did get in, we strongly encourage you to file a complaint with the FBI using the Internet Crime Complaint Center, ic3.gov. And we we have a good relationship with them. Um, they are, uh, you know, they take in these complaints. They see how many other, you know, are, are other people, you know, having problems with this as well. And, and potentially they will bring in ARC, maybe the GDSs, maybe the airlines 
and open up a potential, you know, law enforcement investigation to go after these fraudsters. So that is the end of mine. Do Cornes, do we have any other questions or comments? Yeah, let me have a quick look here. Um, yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, Consequences for travel agencies of accepting these emails unknowingly. So, the, the consequences? Yeah, are there any consequences for the travel agency? Um, there's the potential loss, right? There's the potential loss of that ticket. Yeah. There's yeah. a. Is the uh, airline. Yeah. Fact, He's going to send you a debit memo, and they're going to want payment for those. Yep. Any more questions out there? Please feel free to type them in. It was very, uh, very informative, Doug, and there's a thank you out here um, on the Q&A uh, slide as well, saying that thank you very much, very helpful information so i think you covered a lot um and definitely some good tips there as well so thank you for that yeah what's the other website okay what's the other website other than who is or so another one that yeah that we use at arc is called uh, domain big data.com domain big data thank you so, yeah, those are the might come in. Uh, you know, we'll, we can pick them up on the transcript uh, afterwards as well. Feel free to also email us with any questions. Uh, Doug provided us, provided you with our email. It's showing on the screen here at Stop Fraud. Um, we, can, we can get back to you that way as well. Uh, just one second, let me process. There's a question just came in. Hang on. Oh, okay. Um, no, this is just, I think all of the um, emails that you've shown here on this website, uh, apart from the the um, logos and some of the information that's been redacted, are official emails received, right? These, are, these weren't mock-up emails. This is actual original emails that the travel agency has received. Um, we just redacted the information. Exactly. Yeah, it, we we were requested to uh, uh, block the official logos, but uh, yes, yeah, so you, you will not see the blue. <laughs> exactly, they'll come in and they'll have either, like I said, a trusted industry partner. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, so to to the person who posted that, these these are real live examples of what you have what you should or probably could receive in your email inbox. Nothing else coming in, Doug. I think, uh, I think we're good. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you.